Hi, everybody. No? I don't think so. It is? Did you use this one? Hi, everybody. Yeah, this one's on, definitely. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, I want to welcome you to uh, our very special 2023 Winterfest. Uh, my name is Massimo Cassessi. I'm marketing director here at San Jose Jazz. And it's a real pleasure to have all of you here. Um, this uh, particular Winterfest is a very special one for us. Um, you know, coinciding with the one-year observance of uh, Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, um, this special edition of Winterfest shines a light on Ukraine's very unique cultural identity. So we had nine Ukrainian artists have journeyed to Silicon Valley to join noted American jazz artists like John Hollenbeck, uh, Ambrose Akin Musari, Mark Juliana, and others. So find out more about these other shows at, uh, al along with uh, a companion art exhibition that we have put on and also a film fest, uh, which is a, a first for us. And learn about all those things at sanhosejazz.org slash winterfest. So throughout the fest, uh, we are raising money for Ukrainian relief. So please take a moment to go to sanhosejazz.org slash donate this time and make a gift tonight. Uh, all of these funds will benefit uh, Nova Ukraine, uh, an organization that I'm sure is familiar to, to some people here. Uh, it's a very large organization that, ra uh, that has raised something like $55 million for direct relief to Ukrainians. So this is humanitarian aid. Uh, so uh, we would love it if you could participate in that. Uh, thank you. So before we get started tonight, I'd like to thank uh, sponsors West Bank, uh, SV Creates and the City of San Jose Office of Cultural Affairs, Media Partners Downbeat Magazine and KCSM Jazz 91, and the Knight Foundation for their original support of this break room space. And now on to tonight's performer. The PBS NewsHour has noted Vadim Nesolovsky is a rare mix of classically trained pianist and brilliant jazz improviser. Uh, he was, I think I read he was the youngest uh, student ever uh, at, at that time admitted to the Odessa Conservatory where he studied. He later went to the Berkeley College of Music to study jazz and he remains there as a professor today. Uh, his latest album, Odessa, a musical walk through a legendary city, is an ode to his hometown that serves as a poignant and evocative reminder of the beauty and cultural legacy of the, this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, and it's a site that's just recently been put on the uh, list of sites in danger. So, and now, presenting Odessa in its entirety, please welcome Vadim Nesolovsky. Good evening. Great to be here in Bay Area. For me, this is, I think, my fifth time. Uh, and I have very, very <clears throat> warm memories of my first uh, visits to Bay Area in 2004. We recorded uh, with Gary Burton in Berkeley, California at Fantasy Studios for Concord Records. So that was my big day. And I think it was my birthday. So somehow, somehow one of the best moments of my life happened in Bay Area. So that's a good start. I was reflecting on all these things when I, when I came here. Um, Odessa, a musical walk through a legendary city. The idea to create a project about my hometown didn't come from me. My agent, uh, his name is Ralph Gluck, he's from Switzerland, one day told me, Vadim, you're from Odessa, and we're, we're talking 2019, pre-COVID and, of course, pre-war. Uh, you're from Odessa, Vadim, he told me. Um, we know about Odessa. In Europe, people heard about Odessa because of all these great classical musicians that came out of uh, my hometown, Svetoslav Richter, David Oistrak, and many more. 
people who are into film history, of course, know Sergei Eisenstein's uh, film Battleship Potomkin, which is, of course, associated with Odessa. In New York, I've discovered every time I say from Odessa, people say, oh, you know, my grandmother is from Odessa, my family is from Odessa. You get a feeling that the whole New York City is from Odessa, <laughs> which makes me feel at home in New York every time. And yet, and yet, uh, all those things considered, people don't know much about Odessa. So my agent's idea was that I have to tell my story about my hometown, of course, using the language that I speak uh, best. Hopefully, you're going to hear. Um, so I'm talking right now, and I will talk for a little more, and then I will shut up and play. And I will not talk again until I end the whole Odessa suite. So please, please activate your memory now, because I will tell you a little bit about each movement of the Odessa suite. The more you can remember, the easier for you it's going to be to follow my journey. First movement, Odessa Railway Station. It's about my, you know, coming back to Odessa. It's about leaving Odessa, joy of coming back, sadness of having to say goodbye. Perhaps it's about those characteristic Soviet trains that took me from Odessa to Kiev, from Kiev to Odessa. It takes one night, approximately. And this whole night you spent listening to uh, the wheels of Soviet trains. Doom, 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 doom. People in Western Europe don't know this sound. Also in the United States, I find like Amtrak does something like shh, you know. In Romania, people could relate. Um, anyway, so that's the first movement. Second movement is called Winter in Odessa. Odessa is famously located at the Black Sea, and the climate is unpredictable. It's humid, it can get cold, and it can get warm the next minute. And because of that, it very often comes to this famous Odessa phenomenon, uh, uh, icy rain. So the trees are covered with this beautiful, thin, layer of ice. Everything looks like a fairy tale. It's very dangerous to walk around, but very, very beautiful. Winter in Odessa, you will, you will hear it. It's very transparent, very lyrical music. Third movement, Potomkin Stairs. The title says it's all. Uh, I've been inspired to write this movement uh, thinking about these iconographic images from Eisenstein's movie, Battleship Potomkin, the masses of people running down Potomkin stairs, trying to hide from Tsari's troops, this famous baby pram with a baby in it, helplessly jumping step by step right into the Black Sea. Uh, this movement is chaotic, crazy, aggressive, and I have to say that every time I play it since the February 24th of 2022, I'm also having the images from the news from following the war that is taking place as we speak. Fourth movement, per perhaps the most lyrical, the sweetest movement of the whole suite, acacia trees. We in Odessa are proud of our acacia trees. They blossom end of April, unfun, uh, beginning of May, and this is just the best time to visit Odessa. I hope that I can invite all of you, maybe next spring, to witness how beautiful Odessa is when acacia trees blossom. So, acacia trees is the fourth movement. Fifth movement is a very, very personal one. It's called Walls of Odessa Conservatory. As uh, Massimo mentioned before, it is true, I was 15 years old when I was accepted into Odessa Conservatory. I was the youngest student. Everybody around me was at least 19 years old. I was trying to fit in. And those first two years uh, turned into a whirlwind of improvisation, creativity. 
I started to smoke, to drink, and um, stopped since, but the music reflects the craziness of those years. Walls of Odessa Conservatory. Then it will turn dark. The next movement is called Odessa 1941. In 1941, Odessa was invaded by Romanian troops under Nazi uh, guidance. And um, 23rd of October 1941, around 30,000 Jews were killed in Odessa. This tragedy is now called the Little Babi Yar, you know, referencing the even greater tragedy that uh, happened in Kiev. I'm Jewish myself, and for me, this subject is a very, very important one, and this is the first time that I'm uh, trying, trying to bring, you know, trying to think about this very important subject through my composition, Odessa 1941. Uh, this movement will turn into a prayer, and prayer will turn, after a moment of silence, will turn into a Jewish dance as a sign of hope, no matter what. And then, fast forward many, many years, 1991, I'm a teenager, Soviet Union stops to exist, Ukraine, the independent new Ukraine is born, and I discover rock and roll. My parents allow me to go to my first ever rock concert, and somehow the energy of rock music, the energy of the change of those years gave me the, the necessary climax to the whole Odessa suite. So this movement is called my first rock concert. And the very last one is sort of an epilogue. Uh, it's called Odessa Renaissance. As I was writing this music, this last movement, I was thinking about the fact that at the very beginning of 20th century, there were around seven synagogues in Odessa, many uh, Christian Orthodox communities, several evangelical and Catholic communities. When I was growing up uh, in Soviet Odessa, the only synagogue that remained collapsed in disrepair, the only evangelical church burned down in the early 70s, also because nobody really took care of it. Uh, in the recent years, temples in Odessa have been rebuilt, and I saw it as a sign of hope for my hometown. But now, especially a year into this horrible, horrible, unnecessary war, I'm playing this last movement as a prayer for peace, for Ukraine, for all of us. Please enjoy Odessa.
One more time, Vadim Nesolovsky. Okay, so um, thank you, first of all. Uh, for some reason, it's interesting. In the US, people don't expect musicians to do encores for some reason at festivals. That's my experience. But I'm ready to do one, if you would like to. <laughs> Gotta break the tradition. It's interesting. Um, I played Odessa about 100 times by now. And about 10 of them in the US. The rest uh, all, over the, all over the place. Even in Dubai. Uh, and it's interesting. In the US, people really like, OK, this is the program. This is it. I'm going home. <laughs> in Europe, you know, no, that's that. <laughs> good. I mean, that not anyway. But you know what? I think it would be nice to, um, to end this with something that I love doing. Uh, I'll explain you. So you just heard this, right? And you're probably wondering, uh, is this composed? Is this improvised? How much of it, of it is composed? How much of it is improvised? And these are valid questions. So I'm happy to sign a CD for you after the concert, and you can compare the music on the record to what you're hearing. But at the very core of my musicianship, I'm both a composer who sits lonely in his studio and composes music, and improviser, somebody who creates music in the real time. So I want to end with something that we can hopefully create together. Um, we're going to compose a melody. And this melody will, sound, will tell us how, what San Jose sounds like on 19th of February 2023. And to get this melody, I will need, in a very disciplined manner, maybe like in school, raising your hand, some numbers from 1 to 12. So who wants to start? Seven. Thank you. So we started with seven. Seven, just so you know,
to resolve it, huh? No, 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 we won't resolve it. This is jazz festival. <laughs> so you remember it. That's always the story.
Wow. Just amazing. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming tonight uh, to this very special concert. Uh, I wanted to let you know that Winterfest's biggest weekend starts this Wednesday with Orrin Evans' trio at the Hammer Theater Center. Now, Orrin Evans is sold out, I'm sorry to say, but we do have tickets for uh, the rest of the programming for that weekend, including a couple of really special ones. Um, on Thursday night, we're going to present a special collaboration between a Vietnamese 16-string zither player named Van An Vo, and I'm pronouncing her name really incorrectly, uh, Americanized, um, but she would support that, I think. Um, and we presented her, actually she was a jazz aid fund, you know, we have this program where we grant uh, various artists from the Bay Area $1,000 each to create a new work, and then a few of them we choose to appear in our new works fest, and we've been doing this since 2021, and that's the year that Von Anvo was uh, in the new works fest, and she's absolutely brilliant, and she's going to be performing with a Ukrainian vocalist and multi-instrumentalist named Alessia Zdorovetska. Uh, and it's going to be a really, really wonderful program. And the program is going to begin with a solo dance piece by a Ukrainian contemporary uh, modern dancer um, named Alina uh, Sokult Sokultska. Uh, and it's going to be a really, really marvelous uh, kind of confluence of cultures, I think, that program. Uh, then on Friday, Alina, Alina and Alessia return uh, with a Ukrainian soloist who hasn't yet performed for the fest, hasn't arrived here in San Jose. Uh, his name is uh, Igor Osipov, and he's a wonderful guitarist. They're going to be joining uh, drummer John Hollenbeck uh, uh, and his playful new George project. Uh, they just came out with their first album just days ago. Uh, and that show opens with our audition-based uh, high school all-stars ensemble. They're going to be performing... Uh, jazz arrangements by John Hollenbeck of Ukrainian folk tunes. So it's gonna, that's also going to be a really special evening. Uh, I did also want to point out that beginning that evening from 5.30 to 6.30, you may or may not know this, we're, we're uh, having a Ukrainian flag raising uh, at City Hall, San Jose City Hall. Uh, so if you RSVP for that, you would be RSVP for uh, RSVPing for seating inside of the rotunda. Uh, we're going to have somebody from the Ukrainian consulate. Uh, Anna is going to be coming down. And somebody from Nova Ukraine is going to talk about what they do. And then we're going to raise the flag and light up City Hall in Ukrainian colors uh, and, and have a performance at the... Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And to end the evening, you know, between 6.15 and 6.30, uh, Sonic Runway, if you've been around City Hall, you've seen that, that wonderful piece that was uh, designed for uh, Burning Man. You know, it's a series of lighted arches that responds to music, and so two of the Ukrainian artists are going to be performing uh, to activate that. So it's going to be really cool, and you'll have time to actually come to the Hollenbeck Show after that. Uh, so that's going to end at 6.30, and the Hollenbeck show is 7 o'clock, I believe. So anyway, just wanted to let you know about those things. Uh, now tonight, there's still a lot more to do here for Winterfest. Uh, if you go out the doors and turn left and walk about 200 feet, uh, you will see uh, the art exhibition that we're uh, presenting. It's inside that really contemporary conceptual building called Unzip Pavilion. And it's really a series of powerful paintings by Ukrainian artist Lesya Komenko. And that'll be open till 9 o'clock. And then Denis Sadu, the trumpeter who uh, held sway here last night with his quintet, uh, he's going to be performing at Mama Ken just a few, like 200 more steps down the street. Uh, that's the former Cafe Stritch. Uh, he's going to be performing and soloing with Edgardo Cambone, uh, uh, Bay Area Salsero. And it's a really great scene. And they have a full menu and full bar there. So I hope you enjoy those things. And then as you leave, I just wanted to remind you one more time, uh, please consider donating uh, for Ukrainian relief. Just go to sanhosejazz.org slash donate. So thanks again. Thanks for coming, and have a great night. <laughs>